Welcome to season four of the Get Out of Teaching podcast presented by Larksong Enterprises. This podcast is for teachers who are considering leaving education but feel like they have no options. I'm your host, Elizabeth Diakos. I'm a career transition coach who guides overwhelmed teachers through a five-step process out of education and into a life they love. I'd like to see a world where the work of teachers is valued and respected and that teachers have a career pathway that enables them to continue to offer value to society beyond their work in the classroom. So in this season, we'll be speaking to other experts who help people to change careers, as well as a few ex-teachers who forged a pathway into something new. So come along for the ride as we get out of teaching. Episode 10. Hi everyone and welcome to the show. On today's show, I'm very pleased to be interviewing Karen Tisdall, who is a LinkedIn profile writer. And Karen actually helps people grow their businesses and transition careers through their personal LinkedIn profile. So this is perfect for someone who's wanting to get out of teaching and into a life they love. You've got to get your LinkedIn profile right. So thanks for coming on the show, Karen. I'm thrilled to be here. I really am. So uh, you know, teachers are really close to my heart, especially, you know, in everything we've been through in the last couple of years. You know, I really, um, yeah, such a such a big job. And I think transitioning out of teaching and thinking about what my next career is and having those first steps is so important. Mm. Um, now, tell me, Elizabeth, uh, sorry, I know you're interviewing me, but why do you think LinkedIn is so important for people who are transitioning? Oh, look, you know, if you'd have asked me this two years ago or three years ago, I would have said, oh, I don't really think it's going to be very helpful at all. But I'm a bit, <laughs> I know, sorry. Well, you didn't uh, know me then. So um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So I think what I've noticed over time is that where it used to be very much a place where you sort of parked yourself, if you were looking for something else, and maybe weren't very active I feel like there's a lot more activity on there now where people are posting personal achievements I actually saw a post the other day from my local high school's principal about uh, just something they'd be doing at the school and I'm like I've you've never popped up for me before are you is this new like have you just started to have a presence on LinkedIn and I think we're starting to use it in a way where we're celebrating successes. We're talking about our personal philosophies. We're talking about the way a lot of teachers are on there now talking about achievements in the classroom or innovation in the classroom, or particularly around mental health at the moment with the pandemic. And I just think this bus is, you know, going, getting faster and faster and we need to jump on before, you know, we kind of gets out of control and we don't have a, a place on it. I think there's an opportunity now to create a presence and to create some content uh, for whoever's out there who might be interested in what you have to say and start to posi- position yourself in a way that you're an authority in your space, wherever that is. So that's my answer. I don't know if that's the right answer. <laughs> so for you, it feels like it's less dry than it used to be. And I think, um, oh, I yeah, think that's sure. where it might have been quite intimidating for teachers. Mm-hmm. You know, we were not seeing a lot of teachers mm-hmm. and we weren't seeing a lot of nurses and healthcare professionals mm-hmm. on LinkedIn years ago. And they were they were really missing. And now we're seeing a lot more teachers on LinkedIn mm-hmm. And we're seeing a greater variety of different posts and more people showing up authentically. Now, I I like what you said there about um, showcasing your expertise. And I think, uh, well, we're here to talk about LinkedIn profiles today because that's that's my area of of expertise. I I think it's really important that people think, don't think that they have to be a finished work Mm. before they're creating content. I think it's really important to create a great profile but know that done is better than perfect. You know, it is better to have something that it, it is an iteration. We're all as humans, we're all works in progress, right, Elizabeth? You know, like you're not born like just, you know, knowing all this stuff. You sort of, you, you grow, you change, you, you, what's the word, you pivot. You know, so hmm. I, I would urge people to sort of think about 
sharing content where they're talking about their transition and they're transitioning in front of people. There's a wonderful book on this, which is such a fun, weird book um, by Austin Cleon. Have you read it? It's K-L-E-O-N, Austin Cleon, and it's called uh, Show Your Work. And he's an artist and he talks about this idea of just creating your art in public because when you create it in public, you, you will get feedback from people and that will change your art and your art will change the person. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a really great metaphor for teachers who are transitioning away from teaching because they think, oh, but teaching is sort of this, this specific world. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm moving into the corporate sector. Maybe I'm moving into something else. LinkedIn is not as dry as it used to be. And I can transition. I can show my transformation as I'm doing it. As I'm learning things, I can share what I'm doing. Mm. You know, and then you can take people on that journey and you will build supporters. People will go, oh, my gosh, that's fantastic. I'm thinking about doing that. So you can really choose your cheerleaders in terms of pulling attention to you from people who potentially could become clients, sponsors, employers. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gaining a support network here on platform. It's interesting that you mention uh, that teachers and nurses are becoming more active because um, one of the collaborations I've had is with a financial advisor who works with teachers and nurses. And I see so many, uh, Chris Carlin, just big shout out to Chris from Master Your Money Now while we're here, um, because he's he's a real advocate for helping people to uh, create, you know, shore up their financial future. But he works specifically with those two groups and I see the similarities. They're they're both dealing with high, the stakes are high. You know, you're either in a traumatic situation if you're a nurse, you're dealing with trauma or, you know, an an emergency medical thing. And if you're a teacher, you're dealing with someone's children and that it's like so important to them. And so both both of those industries, I think, and they're also the caring industries and they're both professionals there's so many similarities. So tell me, Karen, why are these two industries starting to show up? What's happening there? With with um, why are they showing up on LinkedIn all of a sudden? I think it's for a number of reasons. Um, one, people are moving away from Facebook with all of the security breaches, and also as people are moving away from Facebook, and as more people are yearning for connection, given everything we went through 2020, 2021, mm. you know, all of the, shall we say, the C word, all of the COVID. No, um, I think they're yearning for connection and they're needing those touch points. So they're reaching out to people on whatever platform they're using or, or hearing about and they're feeling like LinkedIn's that bit much more secure. And also on LinkedIn, you can create a side hustle. So because it is a business platform, not a platform where you go to keep in touch with friends and you go to be entertained or inspired, mm. people are thinking, well, you know, whatever stream they're in, they're thinking, I need to develop a side hustle. So on my LinkedIn profile, I can scroll down to my experience section. Mm. I don't even have to have a company logo. I can just type the word self-employed where the employer section is. Mm. I can pick a logo and I can say that I'm now becoming a cabinet maker or I'm becoming a massage therapist or I can talk to what it is I want to do what I'm transitioning to as a side hustle and I can start to attract clients by sharing work, sharing posts Mm. that benefits them. So I think, I think a lot of the barriers are coming down for a range of different reasons. And I think it's really interesting what you said there, that they're both the caring professions. Mm. Mm. I reckon that is such a nugget of gold because I think that teachers and nurses it's both about, it's their whole life is about other people. It's mm. not about them. Mm. And so on LinkedIn, it needs to, people think it needs to be about them. And that's where people get stuck in creating their own profile. They're thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to write about myself. I've got to create content that's promotional. Mm. And I think the trick to great content, and especially the trick to a great profile, is that you don't need to focus on you. And this may seem so counterintuitive, but it's actually when we think about how we connect with people human to human, 
If the people you connect with the most at a party are not the people who are me, 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 me. Now, Elizabeth, what do you think about me? You know, those are not the people we enjoy speaking to. We enjoy speaking with people who really answer our questions and really listen. And so I think that teachers and nurses are the next wave who are going to nail it on LinkedIn. And so are the IT people, actually, a lot of your software developers and stuff. The the introverts or the people who are other people focused Mm. because they're writing their LinkedIn profile thinking, okay, I want to be, you know, a cabinet maker or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever their side hustle is, you know, um, a a massage therapist or I really want to go and do marketing or I want to do this, you know, think about, think about what, what is the pain that that role is serving? There's always a pain in every job, in every profession. If there's no pain, then there's no job. So it might feel like a joy to you. You might think I really want to be um, selling beanies. You know, didn't you have a guest who who created beanies? Is that right? I love that. Sally Forbes, she's a little amazing, so passionate about beanies. (laughs) Such a great episode. We should go back and look at it. Now, you might be creating beanies, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, when you talk about what's the problem beanies are solving, Mm -hmm. they're solving people who are having bad hair days. (laughs) That's what I would have been. Yes, (laughs) true. You know, bad hair days, people who want to keep their heads warm. You know, so what are the problems that the beanies are solving? Mm. And talk to that problem through your profile. You know, so you okay. know what I mean. When so, I get off this call, I am so going to message her and say, "Write something about bad hair days." That's awesome. I love it. Absolutely, got a bad hair day. Oh, are you stuck in lockdown and you haven't been able to get into a hairdresser? Buy one of my fashionable beanies. You know, so it doesn't have to be mm. promotional per se. It has to be solving a problem. Yeah. And your LinkedIn profile needs to really talk to that pain and talk to that problem. So it's not about you. It's actually mm. thinking about the problems you solve and how you solve them. And if you can share in your profile a little bit, especially if you don't have experience, you know, if you really want to do um, C and you're currently doing A, so you're currently a teacher, but you want to be, you know, a, a knitter doing beanies, you know, if you don't have experience doing that and you haven't sold lots of beanies or whatever, you know, you think, talk about why do you like that? Mm. why are you passionate about that because people connect with the why you know I use my tax accountant because he's deeply passionate about tax Mm. I'm very much not (laughs) you know (laughs) so is mine weird huh (laughs) yeah weird aren't we strangers can I ask you a question though if if someone's transitioning so particularly with teaching uh their their boss could see their posts on LinkedIn their I've 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 gotten I've been asked to delete comments that I've made where I've tagged someone in a post and they're going, don't tag me in a post. My my principal might see this post and I don't even want them to know that I'm talking to someone who helps teachers get out of teaching. So there's a, a big sort of fearfulness and around the confidentiality of creating content that might be seen as I'm not happy with my job. And that must apply not just to teachers, but to anyone transitioning out of a career. How do you get around that issue? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you were first saying that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's insane. But, but that's because the way I talk about it is different. So I don't talk about transitioning away from, I talk about growing a side hustle. You know, so with my right. clients, I'm saying, you know, you want to just get a whole load of clients, you know, there's mm. times of the day when you are not teaching um, and you're probably doing tons of marketing and classroom prep and stuff like that. But in the time that you do have, develop your expertise, mm. develop your LinkedIn profile, create content and don't talk about it as I'm transitioning away from teaching. Mm. Talk about it as this is my hobby because mm-hmm. nowadays, you know, we're in our, I mean, um, I think you and I are probably around the same age, I think. So so, so for me, this is my third um, financial crisis. Not, I mean, we're like so lucky here in Australia, aren't we? we we're, we're recording today. Many of your listeners may be in other countries. Um, but for us, this is our third in our lifetime. If you, you know, I started in the workforce in 1990s um, and we were in a recession then 
We then went through a recession with the GFC, 2008, 2009. So this is the third recession, if you can call it that, because we're very lucky here in this country. Yeah. Um, but this is my third recession in my lifetime. And so now, now it is normal to have a side hustle. Mm. It is normal to have a second job or something that you're making income from. Mm. That is the norm. Mm. So I would just... I would not be worried about creating content and not be worried about your principal seeing it and just talking about it as if it's a side hustle. This is my side hustle. This is my Mm. side hustle. And people like people who are interesting, but make it, you know, the first thing you talk about. So talk all in your LinkedIn profile about what your side hustle is. Yeah. And then just put a little bit, you know, and when I'm not doing this, I'm teaching children during the day if you want to. You know, talk about what it is you want to attract, Mm -hmm. which is what you're transitioning to, Mm -hmm. and build it, build it, build it to the point where you're going, oh, my gosh, if I do the math with my tax accountant, if I do the math, I can actually make more money if I get out of teaching and do this full time. So you want to grow it to that point as opposed to burn the boats. Do you know what I mean? That's how I would tackle it. One of the um, members of the Get Out of Teaching Facebook group, Michelle Wasserman, she actually has done that. So she was an art teacher like I was. Um, she did some copywriting training so she can write copy for, actually did she did the copy on my website or most of it. I did a little bit of it, but she did most of it. Um, and and she's exa- done exactly what you said. She started out doing it. So we had a meeting once, which would have been her Saturday night, my early Sunday morning. Um, because that was when she was working out on the weekends, after school, in the early mornings, like whenever she could fit it in around her teaching job. And she got to that tipping point where she could actually transition across into her, what she created for herself and leave the teaching job behind. And she she only just did it just now in this, in this um, so it says there's summer holidays there in the US now. And she she posted, I'm having one day off for the summer and then I'm starting my new job, which is, you know, my my own business. So that was really exciting to see her, you know, gradually grow that to the point where she could she could move across. And I I, I mean, I don't know how much money that that was for her to have to make, but it would have been significant if she could replace her teaching income. Absolutely. And it's very, it's very achievable. You know, people think, oh, that's a dream. You know, I have a dream that I could do graphic design and that that could be my full-time job and I could get out of teaching. And they may have some angst around, oh, but, you know, if I, who am I without my teaching? But we mm. are all iterations. We are all works in progress, you know. Um, my great aunt um, in Edinburgh um, was a huge influence um, on me. You know, I used to go to, to Scotland um, every few years uh, growing up. And, you know, and she was amazing and uh, she died at 96 and at 94, I remember crossing the road with her and she said to me, she was a bit saucy, she said to me, she said, you know, I cross the road sometimes, she said, and and handsome young men help me cross the road, she said, and I think for a minute, oh, he's all right. And then I remember I'm 94. <laughs> I was so <laughs> shocked that she said that. I was so, so shocked. Yeah. Um. And it occurred to me, you know, in, in my conversations with my amazing great aunt that you are always learning. You don't, you know, you don't feel the age you are inside. You don't, you know, so we are always constantly changing. And, you know, at 94, she was as curious as, and she was said she was still learning. So mm. we are still learning. We're still changing. Don't think that you need to be, oh, I need to be a graphic designer. I'm not this anymore. It, it's, a, mm. it's a transition. Mm. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks. I've got, I've got a, I'm a, let's talk uh, Donna. I'm using Donna, this mythical Donna, who's my sort of client avatar, I suppose, who's, a, she's in her early 50s. She's been teaching for a couple of decades. Uh, she wakes up one morning, she says, I just can't do this anymore. I have to change what I'm doing. Uh, I don't even have, I'm Donna, I don't even have a LinkedIn profile at all, like literally none. So what what's the first place? Where do you start? So easy. Just go, just put into Google, LinkedIn, <laughs> into Google, and then literally start filling out 
the blanks. So start filling it out. It will prompt you. It used to be really hard years ago. I don't know what year you joined LinkedIn. When, what year did you join? Uh, it, probably about three years ago. So Oh, yeah. okay. That, that's pretty yeah. new. So I joined it in 2005. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, know. I, I, I once ran a training session. Someone was like, oh, my God, I was born in 2017. Like you were on it. <laughs> oh, 2007, sorry. She said I was right. born so in you were on LinkedIn before they were even born. And I'm like, I got socks older than you, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so um, 2005 so hard to set up a LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. And you were like, how do I navigate this thing? Um, now it really is a colour by numbers. You just fill in the blanks and look for the little pencils. Um, so when I say the little pencils, all over LinkedIn, there are little pencils. So when you are looking at your profile, so just fill it out and it'll ask you to fill out bits and pieces and bits and pieces. And look for the little pencils. Every time there's a little pencil, you see one, that's where you can edit things or upload stuff. Mm. Don't make the mistake of thinking that this is your resume. It feels like a resume. It feels like you're uploading, oh, I worked from this date to this date. And it's asking me what my responsibilities are. Oh, I know. I'll talk about all the teaching stuff I did. Think about what it is you are moving towards, mm. what it is you want to do. And what are the parts of your role that involve that? You know, so for you, you're an art teacher, Elizabeth. And one of the many things you do is you create, um, you work at events sometimes doing beautiful storyboard pictures, don't oh, you? Yes, yeah, I have done a few of those, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and they're lovely. So, you know, I saw that and thought, hmm, when I next have an event, <laughs> noted. So, um, you know, so thinking Fly up about to Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, when we let you in. So, mm -hmm. uh, so thinking about how can you, use what you've done to talk to what it is you want to do yeah. you know so don't have the whole this is a resume think about making sure that you're keeping you know I said it's not about you it's about your audience mm. you know what are your audience audience being clients you know what are your potential clients or potential employer what are they looking for and how do you start putting that all through your profile nice. really important part of your LinkedIn profile that is sorely underlooked that most people don't think to change is a part called the headline, professional headline. Now, your professional headline is the bit that sits underneath your name. So they should look up you, shouldn't they? They should look up Elizabeth. Um, how do I say your name again? Uh, Diarcos. Diarcos. I love the way you say that. Diarcos. Um, so, you know, so look up your profile and you see that headline sitting underneath your name. That's where you can talk about your side hustle. You can talk about what you're transitioning to. So the person you mentioned, uh, was it Michelle? You know, she can talk about copywriting. Mm. So she could have copywriter, um, yeah website wording and you know she a blog writer she could list the sort yeah. of copywriting that she does yeah and then at the very end of that if she wants to she could write teacher mm. if she feels like I don't really I'm not ready to burn the boats yes. I, I, I don't want to be this and I don't want to freak out my principal you yeah. know you can talk to both but put mm. what it is you most want yeah first Oh, and that headline piece is thinking about how people, all the people I've been working with, I need to send them all an email and go, right, go back into LinkedIn, fix this. <laughs> and they've just allowed you to customise. So in that little bit um, where it asks you, are you, how do you want to be identified as she or her or um, he or him, you can customise that as well now. So you can put LinkedIn expert or something like that instead if you want to. You can change it. I wouldn't it. do that. I wouldn't do that because that's had a huge backslash, back, a back, backslash, what do you call it? A backlash from okay. the LGBTQIA plus community um, saying that, uh, yes, some people have said that they feel quite affronted with that. So I know you can do that. So, um, sorry, just explain. Are you saying that you should or shouldn't put she, he, whatever? No, you can put that, but don't don't customize that to be um, another area where you can promote your oh, business. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. So I know that I know that some people have said, "Oh, and you can customize this, and you can customize that," but but that is meant to be a pronoun section. Um, right. We can put she, her, um, and and some members of of some communities um, have been quite vocal on LinkedIn saying, "This is where you put your pronouns." Um, 
Right. I see. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. Do you know what I mean? But I mean, that's a very personal decision. If people want to promote themselves in that, in that space, they can, but it's personally for me, um, I, I, I would not, I would leave that for your pronoun section. Okay. I would put in your headline section, the bit under your name. Right. That's where I'd talk about what it is you do. Um, and make sure that you've got an about section, a summary section mm. that talks to the problems you solve and why you do it. You know, yeah, why? Are you- I was just going to say, what What if you don't know yet? Like what if you, you know you want to get out but you're not really sure where you're going to go next or what you're going to transition into? You need to have an idea first of what it is you're interested in. Um, frankly, that's where I'd say they should reach out to you for some coaching. And I, I'm seriously not saying that as a plug. Like I mean, hand on heart, if you, um, if I wanted to get, if I wanted to go to your house for dinner, Elizabeth, if I did, mm. I can't just jump in my car and say, take me to Elizabeth's house. Mm. I need to have your address in order for my GPS to get me to your house. Yes. If you're going to have a LinkedIn profile, that's going to attract clients, that's going to attract business, that's going to attract potential employers and supporters, people who will help you to achieve your professional goals. Mm -hmm. You need to have a bit of an idea on what those professional goals are. Now, they don't have to be exact. You know, I'm sure that Michelle, um, well, I'm guessing Michelle didn't know exactly what sort of copy she Mm. was going to write. She might have thought, you know what, I'm going to be a copywriter and I'm going to ghost author books. And then she's like, oh, my God, I hate doing books. I'd like to do websites. I don't like doing blogs. I like, you know, there's lots of different types of writing. So it Mm. might take you a while to find your feet. Mm. But you need to to pick a path. You need to to pick a pond, if you like. Mm. And a a pond is always my metaphor for niche, you know. And because when people say find a niche, I'm like, oh, God, aren't you (laughs) What's a niche? <laughs> it's so hard, right? And so so pick a pond. So find a, a pond. Think about a pond with lots of fish in it. Mm. Do you mind me running with this metaphor? No, and sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking, what it. crazy guest have I got on my podcast? And then think about another pond, right, which has got maybe different types of fish in it. And maybe there's a stream connecting the two of them. And maybe there's a few different ponds. You know what I mean? You're you're in Melbourne. It's a bit, it's a bit, there's quite a few ponds. There's a lot of water around at the moment, definitely. Oh, there's a lot of water in Melbourne. Just saying. And not so much in Sydney. And um, so (laughs) kidding. And so think about finding your pond Mm. that you go, you know, um, I'm not exactly too sure what I want to do, but I know, I know it's not going to be accounting. I know it's not going to be tax. I know it's probably going to be like this and that. So work with Elizabeth, work with a coach to sort of find what it is you want to do Mm. and what your strengths and skills are. You know, look at where your energy is coming from. Find that, pick that pond and then build your profile talking about what your interests are Mm. and then start reaching out to people who play in that pond yeah so the the fish the frogs you know stuff like that and the reason why it's important to start looking at other people who are in that is for a number of reasons so you might choose to find you might find somebody who's doing what you think you want to do Mm. and so you don't have to reach out and connect to them straight away just click on the follow button and if you can't see it click on the more button there's a more button on everybody's profiles click on that and then click on follow and just look at their posts. You don't have to like and comment straight away. Just start reading their posts and then start liking their posts and then start commenting on their posts. One of the biggest things you can do is start commenting on people's posts Mm. when they're doing work that resonates. If you've got your, you know, your profile and all that up to date, they can actually see who you are when you comment. So they can see, you know, I'm a cabinet maker or whatever, and they'll go, oh, that's interesting. Why is this cabinet maker interested in me? You know, and so, and and I know I do that. If someone who's outside of the usual people who comment on my posts, if they even like my posts and I am paying attention, which I usually try to do, I will message them and say, hey, thanks for your comment on my post. And that can often be a really lovely connection. So it's definitely worthwhile because you just don't know who's out there and you don't know who's paying attention to what you're saying 
even if it's just a few, you know, a few words. I got a, a, a LinkedIn, someone posted this, this, she's a, she's in the, U, in the UK. She's a, um, she helps people get their hair salon contract in order, right? Very, very, very niche. small pond, <laughs> right? Um, and she had this, I can't even remember what the context of it was. It was, there was some joke that she was having within this conversation back and forth on LinkedIn about having Jaffa cakes as a prize for a contest. And we don't really get Jaffa cakes here in Australia. So I said, wow, I would accept that prize as you know, if you were going to send me some Jaffa cakes, cause we don't really have them here. And I'm friends with her now. <laughs> Yes. And we're going to, uh, she's promised me Jaffa cakes. I don't know if they're ever going to get here. <laughs> if they do, her name's Becky Went. So if they get here and there's another one, Denise Ferguson, they're like, they're partners in crime, I think, or they, they do stuff together. Anyway, I'm waiting for my Jaffa cakes. They haven't arrived yet, but I'm, I, they have my address. So there's no excuse. They should be in the mail. And they'll probably be stale by the time they arrive. But still, you know, I just love that, that we had this nice little vacuum. Maybe, maybe they're vacuum sealed. Yeah. Exactly. I was listening yeah. to a podcast the other day. Um, and uh, it's one of the most highly ranked um, podcasts on on um, on LinkedIn and on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And I listened to an author speak about a book he wrote. I reached out and I found him on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I found his last few posts, just scrolled right. down to his activity. So yep. Yep. go look at the person, scroll down to their activity, then click on their activity. Right. And I found his post. I liked and commented on his last few posts and I sent him a note saying, mm -hmm. I just heard you on Douglas Burdett's marketing book podcast. Amazing. I'm ordering your book right now. Really fantastic. I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, hope we can connect here and put my name. Yeah. He's messaged me back this morning nice. saying, you must be ordering my old book because I've just got a new one that I've just released. Mm. What's your address? I will send it to you. Uh, oh, my gosh. I've got myself a free book yeah. and a connection with a really famous author. I yeah. can't believe he messaged me back and offered me a free book. Like, That's amazing. fantastic. Yeah. Good so, on him. But that all starts from, you know, you don't have to reach out and connect. It's great if you can. But if everybody could just get in a habit of scrolling through their newsfeed and if people are going, what are you talking about? Newsfeed, setting up profiles. When you look at LinkedIn, after you've filled out some of the basics on your profile, click on the button that says home. It's got a little house on it. And you'll see a whole load of what are called posts in there. So those are pieces of content. And if everybody could have a habit every single day, I do advocate for this, Monday to Friday, take the weekends off Monday to Friday every morning while the kettle's boiling for me it's it's a Friday egg every morning too so I'm standing in the kitchen for a few minutes I'm right. doing it on mobile don't do it on desktop don't sit down and start scrolling through your newsfeed or you will lose hours of your lifetime and it'll feel right. like you've done work and you actually haven't <laughs> so do it on your mobile yep. scroll that was it that was a laughter of recognition right you've done that <laughs> <laughs> we've all done that like oh my gosh where did three hours go <laughs> yep it's a vortex <laughs> Scroll through your newsfeed and like and comment on the posts in your newsfeed that resonate with you. And that's a really great way of doing a number of things. As you said, it pulls attention to you. It's a gift to people mm. because people love attention. Like, oh, my gosh, thank you. You commented on my post. Mm. Thank you. It's a real gift to the other person. Mm. But also it gets you comfortable with being in the public eye. And so moving from teaching where it's all about you're standing in front of the classroom and giving to others, it's giving, giving, giving. It feels quite, I imagine it would feel quite difficult to then send invitations to connect and create posts where you think, oh, gosh, you know, do I really want to be in this sort of corporate time kind of world? It, just commenting enables you to dip your toe in. And mm. if you can't think of anything to say other than great post, a quick hack, um, I, I'm not sure I've ever spoken about this before actually, but a quick hack is to quote somebody's words back at them. Yeah. So yeah. look at their post and uh, so look at what Elizabeth's written and I, I think I might have done this to you the other day. 
<laughs> look, okay. you know, look at what somebody's written um, and take a line or a, a sentence out of what they've said mm. and paste it in a comment and just say, you know, yes, I really agree because of X, Y, Z. Yes, you know, so that's one. Yeah. That's yeah, a great I think I did that when you were talking about um, our teachers on the front line and I'm like, our teachers on the front line. Oh, yes, I, I, blah, shared, blah, blah. I shared a post. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, actually, so- I, another thing I do is if someone's got a video and if, you know, sometimes they're like eight minutes long and I'm like, okay, I, I, it's the vortex, right? I can't get sucked in. But if I go to like seven and a half minutes in, I'll probably get the main point or the summary. <laughs> Then I can comment on that. Shh, don't tell anyone. All right. <laughs> you mean right you on. haven't watched my seven-minute post? You scroll <laughs> towards the end and just call it the, the summary bit and then just put the comment at the end. Yeah, but, that's exactly what I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> but so yeah. important. And it's a gift of attention and people love that. Yeah. I mean, it depends what it is. If it's something that I'm really interested in, obviously I'm going to watch the whole thing. Or actually what I do now is go out walking with my headphones on and listen to stuff while I'm out so I don't have to sit because that's that's something I'm really noticing is that because you know like you said don't sit at your desktop and do it you're absolutely right you could sit in front of the computer for the whole day and feel like you haven't achieved anything with your life but at least if I'm out walking I'm like I don't mind watching someone's video or listening to it while I'm walking so long as you don't trip over but it makes it a bit more kind of I think you've got to make your life work for you, you know, whatever Absolutely. that looks like. For me, that's always hanging up washing. So when I see a six-minute video, I'm thinking, okay, I've got six minutes to pack the dishwasher. I've got six minutes to go and hang up washing, you know. Right. So Yeah, so you can listen to the video at the same time. Nice Absolutely. Time. Things Especially like that. Especially if it's a well. talking head and you don't actually need to look at the content. So, okay. So as a summary then, if we, we've got Donna, she's setting up her LinkedIn profile. She's creating you know, a, a so, sort of a social presence on LinkedIn, what else should she be thinking about in that space? Right. Uh, so um, she should be thinking about, so her headline, mm-hmm. a background banner. So okay. a background banner is when you look at your profile, you will see behind your photo a great big blank space and it's like a pale blue grey colour. Do you want to just, this is going to be on YouTube as well. Do you want to just screen share? Are you okay with doing that? I think you should have permission. What have I got open at the moment? Let me just see. Um, So. Just screen uh, share your LinkedIn profile if you want. Yeah, absolutely. I can do that. I know this was not on our agenda for today, but why not? No, that's a fantastic idea. And so you can just get, um, look at creating something for your background banner now teachers are often oh i should have done this with yours anyway i've done it on mine that's all right use yours and then you can you can walk us through absolutely okay so i will screen share um so i'm using mine now i sometimes see people so this is your background banner here right so see this blue pencil so that's what i was talking about with the blue pencils wherever you see blue pencils you've got really You've got an ability to edit something. Okay. So this. Do you want to just enlarge that a little bit more? Because if someone's watching this on their phone, that's really tiny. Yes. Sorry. There you go. So this is the background banner here. Mm -hmm. And you can create something like this on Canva. It's really important to have in here an image of what it is you're moving to. So what is it you want to do? Yeah, and yeah. make sure that you've got a visual image of that. You can get um, free images um, that are, you know, copyright free. You know, you're, you're allowed to use them on uh, Unsplash, Upsplash. Yeah. Unsplash, Upsplash. yeah, it's great for images. Yeah, yeah, and there's also a whole lot of others, aren't there? There's Pixabay, um, uh, all, all sorts of different things. So uh, even Pinterest actually are often typically royalty free. So have an image in here that really talks to what it is you do. Now, we spoke earlier about the headline. That's this section here. Start so with the most... The listeners, that's under the, the name of the um, the person, like you name your profile name. So it's got Karen Tisdall and then LinkedIn profile writer. And then underneath that, she's got a whole heap of other stuff. Absolutely. And you want to make sure that the first few words of that the first sort of four to five words really capture what it is you do 
So that's why I said, if you don't want to burn the bridge and you still want to do teaching, have that at the end. Mm. You know, don't lead with that bit. Now, another really important part that I wanted to speak about, um, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom of my profile here, and that's your skills section. So make sure that you do um, fill out your skills section and that you've got all of those details there on what your skills are because LinkedIn does care about keyword capture so think what is it I want to be known for and make sure that you've got all of the right keywords in that section mm. yeah it keeps sending me notifications about jobs I'd be qualified for so clearly it's looking at things like that otherwise it wouldn't know that that was a a skill or, or something it could in uh, that I I've obviously been endorsed for those things otherwise they wouldn't be sending that to me Absolutely. So make sure that you've filled out that area. Mm. Um, now, another thing that I wanted to talk about is the featured section. So for those who are on YouTube, you can see here we've got the featured section. Um, if you can't see the featured section because, you know, you're only just setting up your LinkedIn profile, click add new profile section. So you will see add profile section or add section, it says. Um, so add section for those who are listening. And then go to your featured section. And this is where you can have, as I've got, you can have a website. Or you could think about having an image of what it is you do. You know, so so your beanie maker, that lovely lady, was it Sally who did your Sally, episode? Sally. Yeah, I love that. You know, about she could have a picture there mm. of her beanies. Yeah. You know? And then in the experience section again. You can add in their media, images of what it is you do. So if you can have images of what it is you do, then you're really creating something that is not just a flat depiction of you, but it's really showcasing who you are. Nice. I love it. That's great. And such good advice because I think this is a whole new world for people to navigate. And if they're coming out of a profession that is really education is quite insular and you don't tend to look at what's happening in the the world outside in the in the you know other other sectors until you're ready to move and then it's just overwhelming and scary and uh and you feel there's a lot of um I, I talk to a lot of teachers who they're quite fearful at becoming a novice again mm -hmm. and because you know, they've been an expert in their field for 20 or 30 years. And now suddenly they're contemplating going back to being a beginner. And that's really challenging. And there's fear around that. And there's disappointment and there's grief and being annoyed at yourself for being so stupid as to get yourself in this position in the first place. And how do I know all that? Because that's exactly how I felt. So I think one of the things, if you've got a, you know, someone who can help you and guide you through that. So just the insights that you've given us today, Karen, are amazingly helpful in that regard. So thank and you I, very much. I hope that people will sort of see themselves as, um, and, and as always being incomplete works of art, you know, um, just going back to my, my aunt Isabel in Edinburgh, you know, um, 94 and she said she was still learning, you know, we are all, Mm. We are all still novices and if you can just spend time on LinkedIn in the news feed, you will see people authentically showing up saying, you know, I'm, I'm still struggling with this. I'm still learning this, you know. Um, so, it, you know, people are having those dialogues. We can shape what we are moving towards. Mm. Talking about it as a side hustle so it doesn't freak out your you know, boss. your principal yep. <laughs> it doesn't freak out your boss, you know, and you can grow that high side hustle to a point where it can become mm. your full-time salary. Yeah, nice. All right. Now, before we wrap this up, Karen, I've got one final question for you. What's your favourite song? Well, the song that I have going around in my head so much recently <laughs> is Eye of a Tiger. Do you remember? Boom, 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 boom. Bump. Yeah, you with me? <laughs> oh, that's my thing. <laughs> yeah, that's one. And what is it about that 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 is makes it so memorable for you? Well, um, I I've started doing LinkedIn lives um, with somebody who does 
something that's kind of similar to what I do on LinkedIn. So she's all for company pages and she helps businesses grow big on LinkedIn. Mm. She and I disagree on almost everything. And so, <laughs> so we, without ever having spoken to each other, started sort of teasing each other on each other's posts, like, oh, I respectfully disagree on that, you know. <laughs> Right. So we just started kind of hassling each other, to be honest, because everything she stands for is everything I don't and everything I stand for is everything she doesn't. So she's all for like big brands, logos everywhere. And I'm like, logos, yuck. We connect with people on a human to human level. It's about personal branding. It's about people. It's about human connection. She's mm. like, no. And so we collaborate mm. on my LinkedIn Live every Friday. 1 p.m. Um, Australian Eastern Standard Time. And we do a LinkedIn live show where people ask us questions and she and I argue about the answers. Oh, and, this is um, like great fun. <laughs> it's right. And we're all like, we're all like anti um, echo chambers. So because, you know, sometimes social media can become a bit of an echo chamber where everybody's going, you know, yes, I agree with you. Yes, I agree with you. So she and I, we openly argue, but we have the same core values around giving value. And to our audience and she starts most of the LinkedIn lives with eye of the tiger and it stays in my head for a whole week you know and nothing gets me fired up more than that sort of because it's a whole we're going to start a good bout a good and I love it because I think there's always space there for people who have different opinions and different views and different experiences because that's what grows us right yeah that's my favorite song nice I love it Karen Tisdall, thank you so much for coming on the Get Out of Teaching podcast today. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and I think you've given us some great insights and great value today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hugely appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks all your listeners. Thank you. All the best. You've been listening to the Get Out of Teaching podcast presented by Larksong Enterprises with your host, Elizabeth Diakos. Do you know someone else who could benefit from hearing more stories of hope and transition from teachers all around the world? Please take a moment to share this and other episodes via your podcast app. Each share helps me reach listeners just like you who can benefit from this content. The Get Out of Teaching podcast is proud to be part of the Experts On Air podcast network. For show notes and other resources, please visit larksong.com.au forward slash podcast.